afternoon. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another program of A Greater Understanding. I'm Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry, and I want to thank all of you for subscribing and sharing the subscription uh, of our YouTube channel, A Greater Understanding Genesee, G-E-N-E-S-E-E, -E -E. and it helps to get our numbers up so that we'll eventually be able to go live on YouTube, and we're looking forward to that. Um, but People are listening from all over the world and watching, and we certainly do appreciate it. Today, I have an interesting, uh, how would you say, program for you. And it's something that um, the Lord put on my heart when I was watching Doug she or, uh, Sheets. Um, yes. And um, what it was, Dutch Sheets. And he was talking about America the Beautiful. And that song, and when I listened to it, it put tears in my eyes. The reason being is because this is the land that I was born in. And if you want to understand, um, you know, I'm of Druze descent. And the Druze people, the Mohadin, you can go back to uh, jo uh, Jethro, who was Moses' father-in-law, the father of Zipporah, his second bride. And he showed Moses God. And the Druze really don't like to be called Druze. We like to be called Mohadin, believers in the one God. And they directed Moses to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the living God, the God that I worship, the God that I praise, the God that leads and created all that you see and everything that you think that is your idea, in your heart, it was initiated by him. And that is Jesus Christ of Nazareth working. He walked on the earth almost 2000 years ago. God was working in the flesh of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to do three things, basically to save that which was lost, to heal the brokenhearted and to destroy the kingdom of sin. And that's exactly what he did. Ours is not to destroy it, but to stand on what he did almost 2000 years ago. And yes, he's coming back. But today we're going to talk about America the Beautiful. America the Beautiful. It's a tribute to my family and all the wars that they fought in from World War II all the way to uh, Germany just before Desert Storm. And um, stay tuned. And you're about to learn a little bit about Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa's family. So you be blessed. Stay tuned. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And I'm Reverend Lawrence Del Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry. And today we're going to talk about America the Beautiful. You might think some of you pastors and reverends and, and bishops and uh, uh, lay people, why would Reverend Lawrence Del Sifa be talking about government? Hmm. Well, let me tell you something. You say, well, you're supposed to talk about what's in the Bible. Well, it is in the Bible. And if you start with Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, and go to Isaiah 9, 6, Isaiah 9, 6, and you'll find out that actually in the beginning, government was in the Bible. And it says, for to, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government 
and peace there shall be no end and upon the throne of david and upon the king his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice and henceforth even ever even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. America the Beautiful. You're going to hear the song at the end of this program. and also get the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. That's the whole reason for this program, for the um, Bible study that I do uh, every Tuesday. Eastern Standard Time from 5.30 to 7 o'clock from the great city of Flint, Michigan. And yes, I believe that Flint is the site of the largest end time revival in the history of the world. And I don't call it Genesee County. I call it Genesis County. Because God is starting a new beginning for the whole world right from here. Do you know in, in Genesis County... <laughs> Genesee County, there's more church buildings than any other county in the country. Any other county in the country. Well, we do the Bible study from the great city of Flint, Michigan Public Library. And you can go to 701, one is our country code, 1-701-802-5180. That's 1-701-802-5180. And then when requested, Anywhere in the world, you can join. And you can put in the access code, which is 6344132-pound. That's 6344132-pound. I also do a radio program on WSNL Christian Talk Radio. And for those of you who say, well, how would I find that? Well, go to your smartphone, and there's 5 billion and growing people that have a smartphone, either an Apple or an Android. They have an Apple or an Android. Everywhere in the world where they don't even have food, they don't have shelter, they live under a tree, but they have the window to the world. And you can go to your search engine, favorite search engine, DuckDuck, Google, whichever, and look for WSNL Christian Talk Radio. Get that link and share that link with your family, your friends, and your enemies, and you'll say, well, Reverend Lawrence Del Sifa, why would I want to share that with my enemies? Well, your enemies just might one day become your brother or sister in Christ. That's why you want to share it with your enemies. My Bible teaches us that we're supposed to love those that hate us and pray for those that despitefully use us. We are not enemies of each other, although some governments may tell you that. We are not enemies of each other. We are have an adversary. That's the devil. By definition, the devil means what? Accuser of the brethren, day and night. Well, this Saturday, every Saturday at noon till 1215, it's only 15 minutes and it's informative. Saturday, the 2nd of March, brand new month, we're going to talk about how in the world to love your church. How do you love your church? Well, yes, I understand. We are the church. But a place where we assemble. It says in the Bible, forbid not of the saints, assembly of the saints with one another, because iron sharpens iron. And yes, I know there's Muslims that listen to my program and listen to the Bible study and the radio program. There's Jews that listen of Hebrew descent. And if you want to know, not every Jew is a Jew. <laughs> they were Israelite, which was one family, Israel under Jacob. But they are Hebrew. And what does Hebrew mean? It means transferring over, going over from the darkness to the light. That's what a Hebrew does. And that can be determined. A lot of us can be called Hebrews. Um, and we're going to study... Um, on how to the world to love your church. And that'll be Saturday on the 2nd of March. Now, let's get started with uh, my family. My family came here many years ago in the 1800s. 
my grandfather, Joseph Sifa, uh, lived in a community in Pennsylvania. And he married my grandmother on my father's side, um, Fauzi or Rose Sifa. She became, she was Hakeem before. And uh, they had six children. They had my uncle Fred, Floyd, Joseph, Sifa, who was the oldest of all of them. They had my father, Nassib, Joseph, Sifa. They had Helen, Sifa, who was Kasem. And yes, that's Casey Kasem, her son, and also Muneer Kasem. She had two sons. Um, and she became Dow, married uh, my uncle Milham Dow. Um, and that was uh, Casey and Camille's stepfather after their father passed. Um, then there was Aunt Florence Sifa, who became a Najjar. There was Rose Sifa, um, who was a Hamity, and I was named after her first husband, Larry Hamity. Um, and there was Sonia Sifa, which became Sonia Taylor. And first was Sonia Amin. Um, and uh, she was married to uh, Amin. And he and her had two children, Renee Amin and David Amin. And uh, then she married Bill Taylor. And uh, he raised David and Renee. Let me tell you a little bit about how my family, and you might say how the Muhadin or Druze feel. All of my family were born here in the United States of America. And they were born here except for one, that was my Aunt Sonia, and she was born in Lebanon when my grandmother, Grandma Sifa, um, was there. She was pregnant with my Aunt Sonia there in Lebanon, and she was a naturalized U.S. citizen after that, my Aunt Sonia. My family has fought in every war since World War II. And... They had a heart for America. They had a heart for America. Why did they have a heart for America? Well, in the land that they lived, they supported. America, ladies and gentlemen, is the last beacon of freedom in the whole world. They believe in freedom. They believe in, we believe in justice for all. We believe in the rule of we, the people, regardless of what some governments are telling you. It is we, the people. And those documents like the Constitution, the Bill of Rights that were written by the founders of America are still strong today after some 250 plus years because they were, they came from biblical principles of justice. They came from having God in the government. There is a push right now to take God out of government. Why would you say they want to take God out of government? Well, without God, there's no accountability. You can do just whatever you want. There's no accountability for anything. It's important to have accountability. You see, to have true freedom is to know what your freedoms are. And those are drafted in the Constitution of the United States of America here and the Bill of Rights. And it, you, when you know your freedoms, then you're truly free. 
You're not limited by them. Because without knowing your freedoms, it's total anarchy. If you can do anything you wanted to do, there's no accountability. There's no justice. My Uncle Fred fought in World War II. That's Floyd Joseph Zifa. He fought in World War II. He was in World War II when it started for nine months. And thanks to my Aunt Lily, his wife, um, helped him to get out of the service because she wanted him home. She wanted him home. And that was in World War II. Then my father, Nassib Joseph Sifa, he went by Sam. Um, he was in World War II in the South Pacific. Before that, he was in the Middle East and he wanted to come to America to run away from the war because they heard there was going to be a war. And uh, he was in Syria and Lebanon. And um, he was raised by uh, a cousin of his, Nof Hakim. And um, can I ask a question? Though? Yes. Okay, the area we now call Israel. Yes. Okay, back in the time when your family was just coming over to this country. What was it called? Was it called Israel or was it called no, Palestine? It was called Palestine. All right, yeah. That was 1900. Your family came over here, yes, right? Okay, yes. yeah. Okay, I'd like to make that point because especially the ongoing events right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're, they're saying this. Uh, people are saying it was never called Palestine. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was called Palestine. Um, matter of fact, they talk about in the Bible the Philistines. They're from Palestine. They're not from Israel. However, Israel was a state that started in, in 47. Uh, under Lord Balfour, the Balfour Declaration, who never visited the Middle East and um, gave Israel their government there. So getting back to World War II, my, my dad was there. He was raised in, in the Middle East uh, when he was 33 days old. Um, he went with his father and mother uh, Joseph uh, Sifa and Fauzi Sifa, she went by Rose, um, to Lebanon with their five or four four siblings. Uh, and um, that was three sisters and brother and himself, and they went. And then uh, when they were in Lebanon, um, Grandma Sifa, she uh, became pregnant, and then she lost her husband. I believe I was told that uh, after three years old, my dad was three years old and my uncle Fred would have been uh, um, five years old. And there was not a male child to inherit property. You see, in the United States, we have that right. Uh, sure, there was women's suffrage and the women couldn't vote. And then finally they were allowed to vote by we the people not by some dictator or um, other form of government telling, you know, forcing them to do that. So they came here. Well, the, when they were there, uh, my dad was three, my uncle was five, and their grandfather, uh, Saeed, uh, that was Yusuf or Joseph's father, took all the property because there was not a male child old enough to inherit property. You see, in this country, we can't inherit property. We can't do contracts until we're of age, 18 years old, but we can inherit property. Property can be put aside because it's the rule of we, the people, and it's the rule of God in the Bible who established those principles in those documents that established our country here. So then um, my father was about 18 years old. Now my uncle Fred was here, um, here in the States. And my uncle Larry Hamity wanted to marry my aunt Rose. And she was younger than him and uh, he, she told him, she says, I'll marry you 
Larry, if you bring the rest of my family back here to the States. So he did. And they had no children. Uh, my Aunt Rose had a son after my Uncle Larry passed, which I was named after, um, Grant from um, Fareed Sifa. She went back to the old country and uh, got her husband there and brought him back. And they had a, a, a child, Grant, a uh, very dear cousin of mine. And, uh, and then... And then um, my dad came here. My uncle Fred had the opportunity with his brother-in-law and my dad's brother-in-law, Larry Hammity, to open a grocery store. And uh, he didn't want to do it on his own. So he wanted to do it with his brother. That was my father, Nassib Joseph Sifa, who went by Sam. And they came and they opened a grocery store in 1939 in 1939 in Goodrich, Michigan, which is a, how would you say, a suburb of Flint. It's in Genesee County. And uh, after my Uncle Larry passed, they wanted them to change the name to Sifa Brothers. And that's what they started, Sifa Brothers. Uh, they had uh, a store in Fenton, Goodrich, and Davison. And... Um, then Fareed and my Aunt Rose, they had the store in Fenton and uh, they had a divorce and they opened, he opened three stores, Pontiac, Brighton and Howell. Um, I was born October 5th, 1953. And uh, we lived with my uncle Larry Hamity and my Aunt Rose here in Flint, Michigan. Well, um, my cousin, uh, Kamel Kasem, known as Casey Kasem, you probably all heard him on the radio, the top 40, was one time the one number one voice in the world. And uh, he was born April 27th, 1936. Um, he is the oldest cousin on my father's side of the family. I'm the oldest on my mother's side. And um, he fought in the Korean War. He fought in the Korean War. Um, he was, he, he fought in the Korean War and he was a disc jockey in the Korean War. <laughs> if you know, they had the program, um, Good Morning Vietnam. Actually, they might have taken it from individual like Casey, who started it in Korea. Um, then, I have my other cousin, Norm Najar, which was my Aunt Florence's son and Uncle Jimmy's son. And he was went to Vietnam. He was born uh, March 21st, 1946. And he passed October 16th, 2016. He was in the U.S. Air uh, Radio Operator. U.S. Air Radio Operator. And... Um, he fought in Vietnam. Then my other cousin, Joseph J. Sifa, also, but he was stateside during the Vietnam War. He was in the service and he served in the army. Then my cousin, David Amin, David J. Amin, um, he was a, a Marine and he went to Japan uh, and he found his wife, Sayo, who gave him two children. David and Jeremy. Um, then my brother Terry, K. Sifa, was also in the Army. And he went to Germany for a couple of years after, uh, was in the 80s. Myself, I did not have the opportunity to serve in the military. Although I did work for the Department of Veteran Affairs. I was the master listing broker for North Oakland County and uh, for nine years. And I helped uh, watch properties for the VA. I also helped veterans to save their homes because my experience was in real estate. The um, 
to understand um, my family, my family fought and defended their country, country of their birth. They loved America and they love America. They had many children, cousins, numerous cousins. They loved America and they supported America. I remember one time it could have been my uncle Fred or my dad and they were telling me that they, they brought many cousins over from Lebanon and Syria, in the Middle East, and they would uh, say things against the American people. <laughs> and they would get upset. They says, look, we came here for a better life. We came here for a life of freedom. If you're not happy to be here, go back. Go back under bondage. Go back to the the world where we left, where it's not rule of the people. Now, there are democracies over there, but most of them are, how would you say, kingdom-type controlled governments. They're unlike the United States. The United States is a country of peace, a country of love, a country of caring, a country of justice. You see, we have an enemy and he's trying his best to get God out of government, to take God out of our schools, to take God out of our lives and our families. And that's only because he does not love God. He hates God. And if you hate someone, how do you hurt them? But by hurting his children, and we are his children. You see, God does not have grandchildren. He only has children. And the thing about Father God is that he loves us unconditionally. He's loved us from the foundations of the world before the world even began. He wanted a relationship. He wanted a family. He wanted a family to love one another. Now, it's difficult. It's difficult for some of us to love the way God loves. God loves with a agape love, a love without condition. Our God is a just God. He wants a relationship. He brought families starting from the Garden of Eden with Adam and woman so that he could have a relationship, not just like we have a relationship with um, an animal or a pet. He wanted a relationship with himself. And that's why he created us in his likeness and his image. And if you go to, in the Bible, Genesis 1.26, Genesis 1 26 after God created everything in 25 scriptures by word by speech then he had a meeting what I call the board of directors it says and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. Because he wanted to have a relationship with himself. And when it says, let us, that is the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Then in 27, he says, so God, after having his meeting, he says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. And after he created them, what did he do in 29? And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, not by force, not by control, but subdue it, subdue the earth, take authority that I'm giving you 
and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. See, some of us are not. You, you, you heard this, right? Does it say anywhere that we're supposed to have dominion over each other? No. It doesn't say man to have dominion over mankind. That's what America has done with the world. We will go to any country where people are being hurt, punished, pushing them to do things, control, in bondage, will go there to any part of the world and free them, to give them freedom. You see, unless you have something, and we have freedom here in the United States, for a period of time, it's wanting to be taken away from us by the globalists, by those that have only their understanding of having power and authority over us, dominion over us, unlike the word of God, unlike the documents that were created that says we, the people of the United States of America, have rights, unalienable rights. From who? Each other? No, from their creator. We have rights from our creator. And that is what America has and wants to give to the world. We don't go to other countries to control them. We go to other countries to free them. Unlike some of the governments on the globe, some of the governments want to colonize and control other governments for their benefit. There's governments right now in the world that are doing that. There's governments right now that want power and authority and put people in bondage. My family fought in the wars from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, to free people, to free them and give them freedom freedom from bondage and authorities from others. That's the kind of freedom that this Bible talks about. That's the kind of freedom that there are patriots out there right now that are listening to me that want to continue our freedoms continue being able to have self-determination and not be in bondage to a government, any government, any people, any organization that wants to take authority over us. See, us as Christians must take the authority that God has given us to keep our freedoms. You see, the greatest liberator, one of the greatest, the greatest liberator that walked on the face of the earth was almost 2,000 years ago. That was Jesus Christ. He's seen people in bondage. He's seen people that had to do certain things. He's seen people that were legalistic, like the Pharisees of the time. And he wanted to free the people. He wanted to give them freedom. And that's why he allowed America to be organized, to give freedom to the world. That's why France gave a gift called the Statue of Liberty, Libertas. The Statue of Liberty. That book that she's holding is the Bible. 
ladies and gentlemen, to give liberty and freedom and justice for all. That's what America is all about. That's the America that I was born in on October 5th, 1953. I used to tell people that I came in on a waterbed and used to drive my mother crazy. My mother was 16 years old when she married my father, who was 36 at the time. And um, she was 17 when she had me. She was living in a, another country away from her mother and father in Lebanon and her family and uh, living in the United States. And her and I were buddies. Yeah, her and I were buddies. We lived uh, with uh, Aunt Rose and Uncle Larry. My father worked with Uncle Fred uh, in Goodrich, the Goodrich store. And um, I had my mother and father for four years all to myself. And then my brother Mark was born and it ruined it all. <laughs> he took some of the authority. We lived here in Flint. Flint has been the center of my life, along with Jesus being the center of my life now. And uh, he, he is my all in all. He's the reason that I breathe, the air that I breathe. Um, he's the life in my veins. There's a story about... Um, when did I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? Well, formerly it was in uh, uh, June of 1994, First Baptist Church of Fenton, and I was directed by uh, my Aunt Sonia, my cousin Renee, cousin David, and they said, that you need to go to church. And I says, I don't need to go to church. I know God. I found out later that the devil knows God also. I knew of God. I didn't really know him like I know him now. I know him now like uh, Adam knew woman, Abraham knew Sarah. <sighs> yes, yes. Well, when I was young, I was about, oh, six or seven years old. And I was called home early from school one day. And we lived about the, above the store in Goodrich on Hegel Road, Seifer Brothers. And uh, my brother, Terry, <laughs> was playing with matches. And um, as I walked up, six or seven years old, I seen our things smoldering on the street. Now, that's for a six or seven-year-old young man smoldering on the street. And uh, I didn't know what to do because all our things were lost. All our things were lost. And um, I found myself and my father, Nassib Joseph Sifa, my mother, Nabia Sifa, my brother, Mark Floyd Sifa, my brother, Terry K. Sifa, that was playing with matches above the store. Strangely enough, he says, you know, I did that so that we'd be able to move and get a home. <laughs> and Monet was the new arrival. And we were living in a bedroom probably nine by ten in Uncle Fred and Aunt Lily's home. And I had this vision or dream it seems so real to me now. It has for many years. I couldn't sleep. I was very anxious. Couldn't sleep. And everyone else was sleeping. And all of a sudden, there was this bright light that came down the hallway in my uncle friend Aunt Lily's home. And all of a sudden, there was this man. He was in a white robe. And he looked at me, ladies and gentlemen, he looked at me. He didn't speak a word. He looked at me and 
instantly I was at peace and I went to sleep. That that reoccurring dream or vision all through my life until, and I didn't even know who that man was. He, I thought he was a good man. Until I started reading these 66 books called the Bible that was canonized for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is to testify who Jesus Christ is. And I didn't know until after I started studying that it was Jesus that came to this little boy that was six or seven years old, anxious and couldn't sleep, left his godly duties wherever he was in the universe and came to me, a young man that couldn't sleep. I must have called on him. It says in the Bible that he who calls upon the Lord must be saved. Did I receive salvation then? I don't know. But that dream kept coming back and coming back and coming back all through my life, reoccurring. And then I realized who it was that came to me. And if you'll do that for me, ladies and gentlemen, he'll do that for you. You see, he's the one thread. Jesus Christ is the one thread through every faith and belief on the planet. We all see him differently. Yes. Um, I see him as my Lord and Savior. You know, he was asked when he was walking on the earth almost 2,000 years ago, he asked his disciples because he was teaching them. He was teaching those 12 men. And yes, Judas Iscariot. Until he betrayed the Lord. And I don't believe he went to hell. It says he went to his place. He was training those men to put the foundation of his kingdom, the kingdom of God on earth, the kingdom of his father. And he asked them, he says, who do men say that I am? And yes, when you see I am in the Bible, that's the same I am that Moses, when he asked the voice through the burning bush, who was Jesus Christ? Who shall I say sent me? And he says, tell them that I am, that I am, that I am. And uh, when, he, when he sent them, he sent Moses to take Israel from where? out of bondage. You see, then the disciples said, well, some say that you are a good man. Some say that you're a prophet. That time, his cousin, John the Baptist, was beheaded. Some say that you're the reincarnation of John the Baptist. But then Jesus, he wanted to know their hearts. He said, who do you say that I am? And they were befuddled except for Peter, who I call the big mouth. Peter was older than the others. The others were teenagers. And I'll tell you in a minute how I, I learned that through deductive reasoning in the word of God. And Peter stood up, he says, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. Jesus looked to him and said, Simon Bar-Jonah, flesh and blood did not tell you this, but my Father who is in heaven. And on this rock, I will build my church. Was it the rock of Peter? No, because Peter means little rock. It was that he was the son of God. The good news was that God the Father sent his son to be the last sacrifice for the whole world. 
a last sacrifice. No longer sheep and goats and red heifers need to be sacrificed. But the last sacrifice for the whole world. You see, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, before he went to the cross almost 2,000 years ago, he was scourged with a cat of nine tails. She had pieces of metal and glass and bone, and his flesh was ripped off his body. He took 39 stripes, which is 40 minus 1. And those stripes in the book of Isaiah, and if you go to Isaiah 53, those stripes, 53, 5, it says, he is, it's 53, 53, 5. He is despised and rejected of men. Yeah, at the time. A man of sorrows. Yes, he was. And acquainted with grief. And we hid as if we our faces were from him. See, when he was scourged, even his disciples deserted him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. They didn't esteem him. You see, the same people that were talking on that Good Friday when he rode on that colt into Jerusalem. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. They were praising him and worshiping him and putting their cloaks down before a colt as he was riding on a colt that never had anyone ride on it. They were worshiping him as a king. It's the same ones that were saying, crucify him, crucify him. Not too many days later. And it says in 53, 4, it says, surely he hath borne our griefs. And this is the prophet Isaiah speaking. Inspired by God and not himself. The Holy Spirit inspired him. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. We wanted him stricken. All of us, before we became followers of Jesus Christ, were antichrist. We were antichrist. We were Jesus' enemies. Smitten of God and afflicted. Yes, he was smitten of God, the Father. The Father provided his son as the ultimate sacrifice. Then it talks about how we received healing in five. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. Even the peace of a six or seven year old young man in Goodrich, Michigan, in a bedroom with his mother and father, two brothers and a sister. We were healed. And then after he took those 39 stripes for our healing. Yes, for our healing. And you say, hmm, I've been praying to God, the Father, and to Jesus, and I'm not healed. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think God is the problem with you not receiving what Jesus did for us almost 2,000 years ago when he took those 39 stripes? Or is it your walk with God? Is it your walk with God? Is God's hand taken from you? You see, we have the power to pray over others, to intercede for others, for their inequities and their transgressions. 
and to help them for healing. We have that power. That's our authority given to us. How? By God. God gives us that authority. So is it a problem with your walk? Is it a problem with the walk of the person that's praying for you? Or is it a problem that you don't pray for yourself? You see, we all have to work out our own salvation. What does that mean, working out our own salvation, Reverend Lawrence? We have to walk it out every day. It says in my Bible that we must take and carry our cross daily, die daily to self, die daily to our physical flesh, to be more like Christ, anointed of God. You say, well, I can't be like Jesus Christ. Well, maybe you can't, but you can strive for that. You can strive for perfection. You can strive to do the things that you're supposed to do to build a better life for yourself, just like all of my family that defended America to build a better life for themselves. And then what did he do? Jesus went to the cross and he shed his blood, which is the Father's blood. And then he went and presented his blood on the mercy seat in heaven. There was one made here on earth, mercy seat in heaven. And you know that his blood that was presented almost 2,000 years ago is still as fresh now as the day it was applied to the mercy seat? Because there's no sin in heaven. There's not even shadows in heaven. There's no darkness in heaven. See, this program is to glorify who? Jesus Christ, not Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa. But I'm improving my walk daily to be more like Christ. See, this whole program, a greater understanding, is what? Because when you study the Word of God, you have a greater understanding of life, of liberty, of pursuing happiness. Those are all in the documents of this America. He went to the cross, shed his blood. To destroy the kingdom of sin. Yes, all the curses. And the one big curse, he destroyed death. Because it says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of life is eternal life in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that my family love America, defended America, defended others, and helped to free them against bondage. And defended my opportunity to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you'd like to do that, I'm not forcing you to become a Christian. I'm not forcing you to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And you can find out on the, the Bible study tonight how to be a follower of Jesus Christ. But I'm giving you an opportunity to hear the truth as I see it, the truth that has been so much to my release from bondage from myself. See, there's no formula to salvation, but I give you the opportunity to receive it. See, salvation is a heart issue. Now, some of you believe that you need to be water baptized to be saved. Okay, that's fine. That's obeying the gospel. 
Some believe that you recite a sinner's prayer like I'm going to ask you to do if you wish, your own free will. But it's not a formula. It's a heart issue. You see, some people will miss heaven by 18 inches from their head to their heart. You see, in life, there's many choices, many choices in life. Do I want this color, that car, this home, or whatever? But in eternity, there's just two, heaven or hell, and both of them are real. And you better get the answer to those questions right. But if you would like to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, John, could you help me? <clears throat> you bow your head. Close your eyes because it's a personal faith and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for a personal faith. For a personal faith. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And my Lord. And my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I believe that you died. I believe you died. You were buried. You were buried. And you rose on the third day. And you rose on the third day. And because I believe it, and because I believe it, open your eyes, brothers and sisters. And because I believe it, because I believe it, I'm born again. I'm born again. As you receive me, Jesus, as you receive me, Jesus, I receive you. I receive you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen. "Amen and Amen." And if you said that for the first time, you can get a hold of me. There's contact information. Get a hold of me. You can send an email to me. Cities of Hope Ministries at gmail.com or call me at. 1-513-512-3200 and I will get you a Bible wherever you are in the world. Now, they're going to play America the Beautiful in its totality at the end of this program. I want you to listen to the words and the reasons that my family from World War II to here put their life on the line for the freedoms of the world and what is in this Bible, biblical, in Jesus' name. See you next week.